Alright guys, today I want to talk about my strengths and weaknesses as a runner. The things that are making me better equipped to be a runner, maybe get competitive one day, but also the things that are holding me back, maybe permanently or at least at the moment, and how they interact and, you know, just to give an overall picture of me as a runner, pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, let's get into it. So we all have strengths and weaknesses. That's inevitable. The question is how we work with those strengths and weaknesses. Let's jump right in. I have some notes down here. I'm going to peek down at them at times. And we'll start with a strength. Actually, what I believe to be my biggest strength as a runner. And that is my motivation. My motivation is sky high. Okay, It's borderline obsessive. I am obsessed about running. I love it. Uh, it's been, you know, it's interesting, which we'll get into. I've always had a passion for running, actually. Looking back at my childhood, uh, I was always interested in the idea of running. I used to watch it on TV with my dad. He was a runner. And so running has always been a part of my life. I've always been somewhat interested in it. And in the later years, it's really become a great passion of mine. So my motivation and the resultant drive to succeed as a runner is probably my biggest asset because it means that I don't need motivating music to get out there. I don't need to kick myself in the back in order to get out. I am motivated inherently. Like I am just, I, I need to almost motivate myself to not run. Okay, so in order to hold me back from not training too much, because I, if I could, I would just train all the time, right? I absolutely love running and I love training. So my motivation is my biggest asset. And I think compared to a lot of other runners, uh, it's really a, a, a big strength for me. Another one of my big strengths is my structured approach to training. Okay, I'm very good at planning. I love planning. I've always been good at planning, making lists, um, laying out a plan. That's one of my big strengths because in the sport of running and actually in any endeavor you do, if you want to be successful, you got to have a plan. You just got to have a plan. And the ability to sort of gauge when to do something and when not to do something is really key. And it's something that's become a profession for me now, of course, as I'm launching my running coaching business. I'll put a link to it here if you're interested in training programs, uh, online coaching, anything like that. Um, it's, it's one of my skills that I value in myself. And I believe it's really key in succeeding. Of course, in most cases, elite runners will have a coach doing that part and then they will just be the athlete. And whether or not that's a pro or a con for me that I'm actually self-coached, I don't know. We'll see as I progress as a runner if I at one point maybe I will need a coach. But I do like the idea of coaching myself. I, I'm very, maybe I'm a control freak to a certain extent. I do like to be in control of my own training. I don't know if that's a strength or a weakness. Maybe it's a weakness actually perhaps. But yeah, my skills in terms of planning, uh, tr training structurally, and of course, being very goal oriented, having very clear uh, goals. That's, that's one of, that's some of my strengths as well. All right, so let's go through some weaknesses. Uh, we'll go back and forth a little bit. But here's the biggest weakness, I believe that I uh, that I have. And that is that there's something <laughs> wrong with me. Okay, I don't know. I don't have a diagnosis or anything like that, but my whole life I've struggled with certain issues. Like I, I cannot tolerate stress as much as um, my brother Matt, for example, or other people that I encountered. It seems to me that my body, particularly I think my nervous system, is not quite where it should be, okay? So my whole, I had epilepsy as a kid. So I did have a brain injury from a traumatic uh, fall 
Um, that or the fact that I was actually almost dead, or I was dead when I was born. I like my, my heart stopped and, and there might have been some brain injury, I don't know. Uh, but whether it's from there or from the fall, either way, I do have a brain injury and I, I did have epilepsy as a kid. Uh, whether or not that still plays a role today, it could be. Um, certainly there is something wrong with me, I don't know how, how, how else I would describe it. Um, I have to be very careful to monitor my blood sugar, that it doesn't get too low, that sort of thing. I have to be very careful not over exerting myself, especially if I'm in the sun all day or something like that. I don't tolerate heat as well as other people. Um, I have to take great care to recover well and to sleep a lot. I need a little bit more sleep than most people do, I think. At, at least compared to my brother, I definitely need about an hour or even more, 90 minutes more than Mads uh, per night. So this sort of plays into how my nervous system maybe is not functioning at, at uh, optimal um, capacity. And of course this is, this is unrelated to nutrition per se because I, I was this my whole life and I have been eating differently in the past but it has actually improved when I shifted to a vegan fruit-based diet I definitely most definitely have been getting better but I'm still not a hundred percent so I think that's a weakness in the sense that I um, have to be very careful when it comes to training and I do think it's related to the nervous system. It could, in later years, it could also, of course, be related to Epstein-Barr virus, or it could be related to some sort of immune situation, autoimmune even. Um, we don't know, but I tend to think that it has to do mostly with my brain and nervous system. But anyway, so that's a big weakness for me. It holds me back from training hard. Like, I don't think I can train as hard as someone else. So I have to be careful. Which brings me to a strength actually that I've written down here and that is, uh, where is it? Conservative training approach, right? Because I have to back off a little bit. I can't do the hardest, hardest training. I can't do like three or four hard sessions per week. I tend to do better with like two workouts per week. Um, but I do think that's a strength actually in the long run. No pun intended. It is a strength because what you see a lot of times with runners that push and push and push and really train super hard is that yeah they may have great success over the course of a few years but they typically burn out it's very common in the sport that you know you get into overtraining syndrome or you simply just burn out or you lose interest which is actually just burning out in most cases so um i think it's a strength for me that i'm holding myself back a little bit and training conservatively, working to build that mileage and that intensity and that um, fitness over, over many, many years, even decades, um, because it allows me to progress healthfully and I believe it will allow me to have a long career uh, without destroying my body. So yeah, it's a strength, conservative training approach. Let's do another weakness, one that's not so serious, but still nevertheless is a weakness. And that is my ankle mobility. My ankle mobility, especially on my right ankle, is not good. Uh, it's not super bad, but it's not optimal either uh, in terms of dorsiflexion. So that means that I cannot, right, like when you're running, you want to move, you want to have a forward lean starting at the ankles. And the more you're upright because of poor ankle mobility, the more you'll move up and down vertical oscillation rather than forward when you're running and this affects your running economy. So in some cases you can you can stretch you know the Achilles, you can work on that mobility and you can improve and it actually goes away or you know you'll improve your ankle mobility. But in some cases, which I believe is the case in my situation, is that it's actually limited on the front of the ankle by two bones bumping into each other and you can't do that much about it but maybe you can though there are people that say you can and I have been trying but I don't know we'll see over the next few years if I'm able to work on it and actually improve it maybe with the help of a physiotherapist we'll see could be able to turn that weakness into a strength but another small weakness is my varicose veins okay I don't know I can show it to you 
I don't know if you can see it when I put my foot upside down, but back here, I don't think you can see it now, but back here I have some really crazy varicose veins. I'll put a picture actually so you can see it there. Um, and I don't know how, I think it might have uh, come after I did a knee operation like 15 years ago. I think it appeared after that, but it might also be related to my poor diet in my teens, eating a lot of fast food, meat and dairy and all that stuff. Uh, but it's also probably genetic. My dad has it in the exact same spot. My grandfather has it as well. So could be a genetic weakness. And it means that I cannot transport blood back from the calf as efficiently to the heart. Probably a weakness, but probably not a huge problem either. Let's do a strength now. So uh, one of the big strengths for me is my active childhood. I was super active as a child. I was always running around, always playing. Um, and uh, that's gr good. And of course we had gym. We call it gym. It's, it's basically PE class, physical education. Uh, once a week, obviously, at school. Uh, I biked back and forth from school every day. I walked back and forth every day. Um, we did, um, I did plenty of different sports as a small kid. And then eventually I started doing Taekwondo, which I did for 10 years almost, a little more than 10 years. I, I got the black belt when I was 16. And uh, I was an instructor there for several years as well, black belt instructor. And yeah, it was uh, fun and, and it really, really helped me, I believe, in developing a foundation of fitness, strength, mobility, coordination, huge from Taekwondo. Um, and we also did meditation and things like that. So I, I believe it helped me a lot the, the, the years I did Taekwondo. Um, and I also did a little bit of running as a child, not, not actually training, but I did run around a lot and my dad was running marathons and stuff like that. And sometimes he would take me along and we would run these little fun races for kids and stuff. So I was, you know, introduced to the sport at an early age, which is definitely a strength. Um, and uh, yeah, I used to like sprinting. Uh, so I was sprinting a lot uh, in our, you know, in our little uh, neighborhood with the other kids as I, when I was a kid. And we were just uh, sprinting and all, all time. And I was actually one of the fastest sprinters. Um, I, actually, I've almost never been beaten in a sprint in my whole life, uh, which actually, you know, could be seen as a strength because it's running after all. But it could also indicate that I'm more fast twitch muscle fiber type of guy, which uh, which is not good if I want to get into long distance running, marathoning, which I am, of course. So possibly a, a weakness, I don't know. Yeah, my sleep and my health, I believe is a, is a strength. And But I also said just, just earlier that it is a weakness that I need more sleep because of how my body works and, and stuff like that. I'm a little bit more sensitive to things and stress. Uh, but I do believe it's a strength that I prioritize sleep because so many athletes out there, they do, do not prioritize sleep and recovery as much as they do training. But you cannot have gains without recovery. All right. So training and recovery goes hand in hand. It's the same thing. So th that's a strength for me that I prioritize sleep. Uh, it's also a strength that I prioritize recovery in general, huge strength and just health overall. I'm totally a health nut, obviously and I'm into healthy living, healthy nutrition, healthy habits. I don't do much unhealthy activities. And so that's certainly a strength as, a, as an athlete for sure. And that of course ties in with my, my diet, which I also believe is a strength, my nutrition plan. You know, eating a high carbohydrate diet, great for runners, essential actually for any endurance athlete. Um, a lot of fruit, which is full of antioxidants and nutrients, and it's really our human, natural human food, right? We are frugivores by nature, really. And um, so a high carb diet, lots of plant foods, well, all plant foods, actually. I'm a vegan, obviously, and I do believe that is a strength. You'll recover better, in my opinion, and you'll just overall get better nutrition, as long as you, of course, do take certain supplements which are necessary, not because you're a vegan, but just because of the, the, the way we're living in today's society. I do believe some supplements are essential and I do take those supplements. So overall, my health recovery nutrition plan is just 
very solid and I believe is a huge strength for me as a runner. Back to some weaknesses, um, my age, right? I did get started pretty late. As I said, I've always been running a little bit, but I had a huge hiatus from any type of sport in my 20s. So I, I was just not doing anything, literally. I was just smoking weed and eating. I was a vegetarian actually, but I was not eating healthfully. And the weed was a benefit to me, I believe. I, I evolved a lot in those years, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. I learned so much about myself. I didn't feel like I had an abusive relationship to the herb. Um, it was a good time of my life, but, but health-wise and, and, uh, and, and fitness-wise, it, it was really not that good. My health and fitness went down the drain. <laughs> and so that's a, that's a problem, of course. Uh, because I did build up a lot of base fitness in my teenage years and as a child with the Taekwondo and overall just being active. And I lost a lot of it, I think, in my 20s. But then I got back into it. And since I was 30, I've focused on running, especially the last two years. I've had a good, consistent block of training. And I've had, I made huge gains, as you know, on this channel, as you follow me here. Um, so, But I am 33 now. I'm turning 34 in just a few months. And that means, you know, I am old in the sense of sport, but I do, be, you know, Kipchoge, uh, he says he's 34, but I think there's a lot of people agreeing that, you know, he's probably more like 40. And uh, Kenesisa Bekele is 37. He just ran a, almost a world record at the marathon. I definitely believe it's possible for me to reach peak fitness at around 40. So I have six more years to really build my fitness towards the peak of my life, which will probably happen around 40. And then uh, we'll see if I'm, if I'm able to be competitive in some, some way or another. Most of all, I just love running, so it's okay anyway. But I would like to be competitive, um, of course. Wow, this is becoming a long video, but all right. If you're still here with me, I appreciate it. Uh, I really appreciate you watching these videos. If you maybe if you're interested in more exclusive content, because if you're still watching, it means you're a fan probably of the channel and of the content. And if you want more, I actually do monthly Q and A videos over at Patreon. I'll put a link to Patreon here. You can sign up. You get ex access to exclusive content. You pay like five dollars or whatever per month, and you get access to that. It's like a little inner inside cl insiders club, if you will. Maybe you, you'd be interested in checking that out. And of course, if if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed, you better subscribe. Uh, let's do some more and then we'll finish it up. So um, let's do a strength. Ba, 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 ba. Understanding physiology. That is a huge strength for me, I think, because I do pride myself in being quite intellectually um, advanced, <laughs> I guess, uh, academic. I don't know, I've always been into learning and reading and um, over the last five years or so, I've been totally interested in physiology, human physiology, anatomy as well, biochemistry a little bit. Um, and now in the last few years, exercise physiology, which means that I have a very thorough understanding of why we do certain things in training and how it affects us and how we can modify the training to give us the best possible result from a physiological standpoint. And so. I do believe that's a strength because it means I'm better able to coach myself. As I said earlier there, I'm not just a coach who's coaching myself and others. You know, uh, I do coach others, as I mentioned. Um, just a reminder, the link is in the description if you want to check out my coaching website. So as a coach for myself and others, it's important for me to understand why certain things are done. Okay, so I, I do believe that's a strength that I understand the physiology aspects of things. Um, let's do a weakness and then we'll finish up with a strength. So yeah, my, uh, my, I'm, I'm pretty tall. That's a weakness. I'm, I'm 183, 183 centimeters. I think it's about six feet. It's pretty tall, which is not a, a great thing if you want to be a marathoners. You know, marathoners are usually a little bit shorter. Uh, I have large feet, huge feet. They're like size 46, 47, which is like 12, 12 and a half, I think in the US. Uh, pretty big, um, 
And again, if you want to run fast marathons and stuff, you want to have as least as po- the least possible weight on the ends of your extremities. So your feet, the lighter they are, the better. And so we, we're all trying to get as light as possible when it comes to shoes. Well, if your foot is huge, it will weigh more and that will be like having a heavier shoe. So, you know, ideally I would have sh- smaller feet, but I don't. They're also very wide, which makes it difficult for me to find running shoes that fit. I do find that the Hoka shoes, uh, especially the wide versions, they fit me quite well and some of the Ultra shoes also fit, but I've come to enjoy the having a little bit more heel to toe drop lately actually, partly because of my ankle mobility. It sort of allows me to come forward a little bit uh, and not stress that ankle joint as much. Um, yeah. I mentioned earlier my sleep. I, I do have poor quality of sleep. I think it relates back to my nervous system and the way my body works, which means that I need more sleep. So that's a that's a weakness. But as I said earlier, I think that sort of that that is this has forced me to prioritize recovery. I need to prioritize recovery. I need to prioritize sleep. I need to prioritize diet and nutrition because if I don't, things are not really going very well for me. Okay, so in my teens and even early 20s my health was not really good i was sick a lot i was not i was tired all the time and i think this had had to do with the fact that i didn't prioritize all those as other aspects whereas some other people might be able to get away with less sleep and just taxing their bodies more i couldn't so the fact that i can't do that means that i have to prioritize it but but at, at the end of the day i think that's a strength because it gives me an edge actually prioritizing recovery as an athlete We'll finish up with the last one uh, on the strength side of things, and that is my willingness to go all the way. And that comes back to the first point, which was my motivation. I'm willing to go all the way, okay? I am super inspired and motivated about this journey as a runner, and I want to take it as far as I possibly can, okay? That is probably the biggest strength there is almost when you look you know maybe you could say physiological things like muscle fiber composition and you know vo2 max and stuff like that is more important and in a sense it is but if you don't have the motivation if you don't have the drive if you don't have the willingness to go all the way all that stuff is useless you know so much better to have a physiologically weaker athlete that's super motivated than a physiologically stronger athlete that n- that's not motivated at all. I feel like my English is it's really bad in this video. I don't know why. Uh, okay, but you get what I'm saying, right? So like the best, either way, motivation and drive is, is really key and I have tons of it. So that's it. I... I I enjoy this journey as a runner. I love having you guys with me, of course, uh, here, documenting my, documenting my journey. And I don't know how many actually watched this video to the end. If you did, please leave a comment. Tell me you watched the video to the end. It will make me so happy to hear that, even though I think most of, uh, most of the viewers probably didn't. But that's okay. Uh, share some thoughts in the comments, maybe about strengths or weaknesses that you have as a runner. Um, or if you have some thoughts about some of the strengths and weaknesses that I have, um, feel free to share them in the comments. That's it for today. As I mentioned two times already, my website as a running coach is down below. And if you're interested in me coaching you, I'll help you to get to where you want to go. If you have any goals, running goals, you want to run a race, you want to run a specific time, we can get really down to business make a plan all the details i love that stuff Uh, hit me up on the website if you're interested in that all right thanks for watching have an awesome day